is Luke Mar, and this is Hot Love Mode. And today on Hot Love Mode, I am going to be telling you all of the fall winter trends for 2018 and early 2019 that you should probably know about. I know on Hot Love Mode, we mostly roast people and then we mostly educate ourselves on the fashion industry. But I know that you guys really want me to talk about some of the trends and the looks and the pieces that you can actually implement into your wardrobe that are cute and that are poppin'. So I forgot to do my intro, so you're welcome. Also, yes, I am stealing Emma Chamberlain's editing style. Who am I? I don't know. Copyright me. Try it. If you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, and bitchy analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button, and turn on my post notifications. I mean, like, what do you have to lose? You're already here. You're letting me explain to you what you should be wearing for the rest of the year. And if you want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at hotlamode. I post some pretty pop and fashion memes. And also, you can follow me on Twitter. It's where I'm a bitch. So let's get back into the video. I want to say that you need to have a good stance on Vogue Runway. Make sure that you can actually look up all of these shows because it's important to be able to look through the shows to find pieces that you like, things that you think are really cool, things that you feel like you can emulate. Another thing I want to say is that I don't have millions of dollars to spend on designer pieces. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but this is Calvin Klein jeans, not the Ralph Simmons collection. But I want to say that since I was like 14 or 15, I have been going to thrift stores or vintage stores or even like when I was shopping at fast fashion places, I would go and I would be like, okay, this is like the Ralph Simmons piece that I love. Oh, this is the Margiela look that I'm obsessed with. And I'd be like, what is a way for me to make this without actually having the money to go out and buy it. I think the thing we have to understand with this video is this is about how can you emulate trends and emulate runway pieces and bring them into your wardrobe in a way that's affordable and a way that is possible because I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going to Marshall every day being like, hi, um, 17 of the different tabby boots. I just want to say that a lot of this is vintage. A lot of this is online shopping and a lot of this is hard work. Like it's not fucking easy. Like Zara and H&M and the vintage stores are not just going to present you with Marc Jacobs' whole collection like go for it like that's not gonna happen you have to do some actual fucking work you have to put some time into it but I know you all and I know that you will be able to do that the final thing I want to say is that this is for both men and women so let's just get into this video so first uh, we're gonna be talking about like military slash uniformity I feel like that was a big thing on the runway mostly men's but also it kind of came in the form of Prada and Tom Brown so I would be looking to those sort of military-esque pieces if you're looking to kind of, you know, butch up your look, serve some masculine realness. If you're looking for this uniformity experience, I would suggest that you maybe buy a boiler suit. I know that I have one and I've heard that if you tailor them really, really well, they actually are really amazing. So it's not just this gigantic garbage bag on your body. Like it actually looks cute. I also want to say that tailors are very important. Like somebody that can actually sew your garments so that they fit. A good tailor is like a boyfriend. When you find one that's amazing, you keep it, you lock it down. You make sure that that motherfucker is not going anywhere. Another thing that I think kind of fits into this whole military vibe are Doc Martens. I know I shit on Bella Hadid for them with that whole Kylie Jenner birthday video. But since then, I've kind of been like, all right, docs, they're coming back. I saw them at a bunch of shows during New York Fashion Week. Look for a little bit of like out there styles, out there colors, but also aren't gonna be like those kitschy cat girls that wear the fucking cat ears at your school and like hisses at you in class. Don't do that, that's not cute. Another really easy trend to emulate is the 80s. It was literally everywhere. It's all anybody's been doing. I mean, whether it's gigantic shoulder pads, whether it's oversized clothes, or ruching and neon, like, it's a fucking trend. Neon is kind of its own trend in and of itself, thanks to the Kardashians, but it plays into that whole 80s highlighter. Essentially, go for oversized pieces. Like, they're cute. You can literally live your best life. I'm wearing oversized pieces all the time. And it's not hard to find them at, like, vintage or thrift stores. I personally am rocking a pair of, like, MC Hammer jeans that I found that I'm in love with and that I will never give up. And also, I have this really amazing leather trench set that is a pair of pants and also a big, beautiful leather trench coat. Look for leather trench coats. Look for vegan leather trench coats if that's what you gotta do. Look up Madonna. Look up Grace Jones. Look up, I don't know, Boy George. Another really big fall winter trend is the Wild West and like Western pieces. I'm wearing my Calvin Klein 
cowboy suit right now as we speak. I love this western trend. I think it's fucking fun. I love cowboy boots. I love denim sets. I actually like prairie dresses. I enjoy cow prints. I also don't even hate a bolo tie that much. Like, go for the western vibes. They're really cute. They're really wearable. Another fall, more winter trend is definitely shearling. I know that it's a controversial subject. I feel like I should do a video on fur and like my thoughts and all of those things because it's a tense topic, but I do really like shearling. It's the only kind of fur that I have ever liked. It's the only kind of fur that I really actually wear. But if you live in like a tropical climate, I would suggest not buying a shearling coat because like you'll die of heat stroke. So, PSA. Okay, so let's talk about plaid. There definitely is an abundance of it on the runway and especially in vintage stores and on retail floors as well. Luckily, it has been something that has been continuously showing up on the runway, so it's an easy peasy way to kind of buy into a trend, but you're not like dedicating your whole life to some crazy silver glitter experience or like some crazy 80 shoulder pad moment. It's very simple, it's very chill, you can diversify it, you can go from like a really corporate gray simple plaid all the way to like a crazy sheer Horowitz. Hennessy Caroline at the BMA is kind of plaid. It's really diverse. I want to make it known that I think that it's definitely possible to find vintage suits. That's something that I've always done and then get them tailored. And I want to make an announcement that if you guys are still buying from fast fashion retailers, that's totally fine. Like I don't want anybody to think that my fast fashion video was like me condemning people and me saying like, you have to buy only sustainable retailers, blah. Like that's not what that was for. It was just to like inform people that this is what happens and it sucks. I know, I'm, I've been there, I'm still semi there. If I didn't live in New York, I think I'd have a much harder time finding really great pieces. So I'm not gonna blame anybody. If you have to buy a nice fucking plaid jacket from Zara or H&M or Forever 21, you do that and that's fucking fine. Do not beat yourself up if you are still shopping from a lot of retailers that don't have the best ethical moments because it's fucking hard to find brands that do. Another thing that really came out on the runway were pleats. And it's very interesting because they're not like, oh, old lady pleats. They're very Japanese kind of isemiyaki pleats, please kind of pleats. But yeah, my recommendation is type in isemiyaki on eBay or on Depop or on Poshmark because people even say, oh, this looks like isemiyaki or oh, this looks like Margiela or whatever because they're not actually an isemiyaki piece. It just looks very similar. So you're getting a similar product. It's just, it's vintage and it's cool and it doesn't cost you like $400. The next trend is layering, which is actually really great because you don't actually have to like buy anything in particular to be a layering queen. I know that I'm not a layering queen because I get fucking hot as shit all the time in the winter and fall, but if you're constantly cold, this is the trend for you. You can do it yourself, make up your own fucking layering tactics. If you wanna go crazy, do a Balenciaga, wear like 700 jackets and look like that guy from Friends. Live your best layering life, okay? Another smaller trend was blankets, which is very interesting. You saw them at Alexander McQueen, Gucci, Isabel Marant. I will say that if you can style a blanket into like a coat or something like that and make it not look like a girl from Pinterest, I applaud you. But I was doing some more research as well and eBay actually has a bunch of really cool blankets that are in different plaids and different fabrics and different textures and different prints. So you can actually like have a cool wool blanket or a cool blanket that you can like turn into a coat or anything like that. It just depends on how you're gonna style it. It's all about experimentation. Look to Celine as well. They like have blankets as an accessory you could like carry them you could like style blankets like a tartan sash you could style blankets just on one shoulder you could turn it into like a little jacket another interesting fall winter trend were florals which honestly is questionable because florals flowers they die in winter it's a thing it just happens but a lot of these florals had black backdrops and then the florals kind of popped because there was a black backdrop to make them really vibrant i think it's gonna be hard to like find a black backdrop floral piece but definitely try and incorporate different floral dresses and floral jackets and floral pants and floral shirts into your winter wardrobe. It's definitely possible. And I mean, Calvin Klein did a really great job of showing everybody how to layer with dresses. And there's so much layering that you can do with your floral pieces. 
So it's really great. I would look to Richard Quinn, Simone Rocha, Gucci, Saint Laurent for floral pieces. I mean, even if you're buying like a nice floral dress and just doing like a really simple tight and a bad bitchy black boot, it's cute. It's very Saint Laurent, it's very 80s. Like you really can mix all of these different trends together and like get good solid looks. So yeah, if you find a floral that you think is gonna work for the winter, go for it. The last big trend I wanna talk about is animal prints. This is a personal choice, but like leopard, zebra, cow, python, those are all a thing, they're all happening. Python more so in boots and cows, also kind of boot accessory, but the leopard and the zebra and the giraffe, you know, make good choices, okay? Like don't, you know, dress while under the influence, because if you're wearing a full gigantic cheetah look, choice, but if you're also just wearing like a one little piece of cheetah, it's it's a real choice. You have to be really discretionary with how you wear it. Just don't look to like the mob wives or any of the real housewives. Accessories also had a really good solid moment. First, Chanel did this whole like chain belt thing, and honestly I think it's a really good trend that you can like go to Home Depot or go to your local hardware store, buy a chain, and turn it into a fucking belt. Also, silk scarves, they're having their moments. A lot of them are turned into dresses like at Marine Sayre, Richard Quinn, Celine, but I don't think you're gonna go anywhere and be like, oh my God, this silk scarf dress is amazing. Like, that's probably not gonna happen. But there has been a whole big thing about head covering, so if you wanna do like a silk scarf head covering, if you wanna do a little top made out of a silk scarf, if you wanna like wrap your bag in a silk scarf, there are a whole lot of ways to do it. It's definitely possible. Even if you're wearing like a little, you know, bandana, cowboy, silk scarf moment too, like it's definitely possible to do. Another thing that we just recently touched on is head coverings. There were the balaclavas at Gucci, Calvin Klein, I don't know who else has done them, but that was a big moment. You have to be really conscious of balaclavas because like A, again, tropical region, heat stroke. But if you live in a cold region, your hair is gonna get fucked up when you wear a balaclava. So be conscious. If you're going skiing, balaclava, great, beautiful, do it. Also, hoods. Go for a hood, wear a sweatshirt, live your best life, get a coat with a hood. Coats with hoods are great. Another little trend in the accessories world were gloves. They happened quite a lot. I'm pretty positive Calvin Klein, Kalina Strada. A lot of people did them. Look at the photos. I think that gloves are actually very cool. Find some gloves that are not like boring, ugly old gloves. I'm sure that you can find them online. I haven't done that much research, but you'll see them somewhere, I'm sure. Just look them up. You never know what kind of cool glove you can find, even if you're wearing those like plastic ones that your mom washes the dishes with. Also, one-sided statement earring. There are a whole lot of singular statement earrings, you know, just, just one. But try it, see if you like it, you never know. Finally, let's talk about shoes really, really quick. One big thing that was on the runway is slouchy boots, like those weird sort of slouchy boots that I don't understand how anybody's made them and how they work but they're definitely there if you happen to find some slouchy boots. Again, Python. Python is amazing. I love a Python boot. Obviously like go for a you know, faux or printed Python. I'm not saying like go skin a Python in your local area and wear them. Another big thing were open shoes. I don't really know why anybody would wanna wear open shoes in the fall and the winter, but you can definitely go for like a fishnet. You can go for a stocking, a legging. One of those things that horse riders wear, uh, there's something too. Like there are a lot of ways to wear an open shoe if you want. Also though, if your like toes are starting to look like they need to be amputated, I would go with a boot. Finally, I didn't really see a lot of sneakers on the runway, but that does not mean that they're not cool and that does not mean that we aren't gonna stop wearing them. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this was, you know, fun, enjoyable. You got a little bit of the trend moment out there. You can kind of implement some of these things into your whole wardrobe. Please let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. I will definitely Definitely answer them to help you guys out and remember check the description because I'm gonna put a bunch of links in there whether it's sustainable brands or pieces that I found that are really cute and with that thank you guys so much for watching I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL